the the way of conducting uh, in opera house of course uh, i would say you as a conductor you of course at some spot uh, at some spots you are um you are driving the car uh but at many many points you are just the uh, assistant uh, director choreographer stage things uh, soloist uh, ways of feeling the phrase you must uh, you must hear you must feel it's it's not always just just your tempo and just your uh, your things Leipni Lukt, Programma Vienna Balsi. Today I'm very glad to receive Kaspars Adamsons. Kaspars is conductor, he conducts orchestra, he conducts also choirs, mainly of a mixed choir sola, and is also teaching conducting at the Latvian Music Academy. Um, Kaspars, thanks to be here with us today. Uh, I'm uh, really grateful for your support since I started uh, this project. You've been uh, uh, very helpful with me. And um, my first question would be uh, to understand how you became conductor. I know that there is uh, some kind of family history. Your uh, father is a, a conductor himself, he's a composer. Uh, your brother conducts, your sister is, uh, is singing, and uh, um, I'm interested in um, maybe the studies you made, who are the people who met that mattered for you uh, to uh, encourage you in this way, and um, yeah. Yeah, at first, uh, thanks uh, for the for in invitation to this uh, discussion, and uh, yes, you are completely right. Uh, my both parents are uh, musicians. Uh, uh, my father is a conductor and he sang in Latvian radio choir for almost 30 years. So quite a long time. And uh, my mother is a yeah, musical teacher in, in, in kindergarten. So um, all my childhood I was uh, together with my, my brother all the time inside the Mainly, I would say, uh, mainly inside the uh, choir world of, 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 of uh, yeah, uh, Latin choirs, especially the choirs that was conducted by my father. Mm, we traveled a lot, uh, yeah, uh, in, in Latvia and abroad. Uh, we were together in rehearsal process. So I, I would say that this was uh, quite a, yeah, a big issue and a big thing for me as a person, as a musician, from the very first steps and the very first first my years to yeah, uh, get uh, get the feelings and and get to know me and myself as uh, as musician. Uh, of course, not all already as a conductor. At first, I played a violin for some ten years in Emil Zarzinch Music School. Then I went to Rigadon Boys Choir School. Then, uh, yeah, there I was uh, teaching, especially uh, conducting, and then of course uh, to Latin Music Academy and so on, so on. Uh, yeah, you are also right that my brother also is a, is a conductor. Um, he mainly conducts uh, choirs, not orchestras, here in Latvia. And my sister, uh, she's a singer. She now st uh, studies in Stuttgart uh, in, in in master level. So, yeah, she will graduate after a year, so hopefully she will also get uh, great opportunities to uh, find her spot uh, in this, uh, well, I would say, uh, uh, yeah, great musical life in a world. Mm. <laughs> and why um, uh, to focus specifically on conducting? You were not tempted at some moment to 
perform um, as a violin player or piano player. It's uh, why did you think it was <coughs> your uh, your the best way for you? Who knows what's the the best uh, way for us? Uh, mm-hmm. But but especially when you are I don't know uh, 15 or 16 years old, <laughs> uh, you think well uh, there's there are so many options and then so many roads to uh, to drive. But uh, for me, uh, mm, when I was yeah some 14 or 15 years old and I played violin for some eight uh, eight nine years. I understood for myself that uh, I like to play violin. I like to do it some two, three hours a day, but that's that's enough for me. And that's the maximum I I can focus. I can do the technical things, but of course, if you if you are studying in a in a in in a, in the highest level, as it as it is mm-hmm. uh, here in Latvia in, in Mozart's music school. Or well, with three hours, it's it's not enough. You must practice at least six, seven, or maybe maybe more to uh, to yeah to build up your technical skills. And uh, at, yeah, at, at these at last uh, last years with while, and I un- understood for myself that I I really like I enjoy the musical life and music as it's uh, as as an art. But uh, I must find my own way and. It's not a it's not a violin for me, so that that's why I I tried uh, yeah afterwards this this conducting thing, but again as I said uh, I was 16 years old and I, I tried also some uh, uh, yeah marvelous things I I I, I went to play a football uh, a professional level for for one year at a year of 16 not at six or at four as as usual uh, childs are, are doing i just uh, wanted to uh, to show myself and to uh, find yeah the answers uh, can or cannot i do uh, uh, particular that uh, that thing and then at that time it was quite famous uh, football clubs conto in uh, latvia and for one season, for one year, I, I was also uh, practicing and and, and uh, training with them. But of course, it's it's impossible to uh, uh, yeah to to mix and then to blend these things together. Uh, professional uh, uh, sport and then professional music. Yeah, I understand the feeling. I, I, okay, and uh, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, well, I I find striking the variety of things you are doing even in the field of musing and conducting. But it was going to be my next question. Uh, How is it different to conduct an orchestra, uh, a choir? I think you used to work for a time as a conductor also in the National Opera. Uh, Yeah. yeah? So how are these things different? And what is also in common? (laughs) Well... uh... For me as a conductor, the common thing, and I, I, I think also for my colleagues, it's um, some basic uh, theoretical and technical things, uh, as, I don't know, the gestures, they are always quite the same uh, in, in, in big lines, if we are speaking in big lines, when, whether you are uh, working with choir, with orchestra, or with the wind band, but uh, the... <laughs> There are quite uh, quite a lot of uh, non-similar things, and and for me as a conductor, the the most interesting thing is uh, uh, the the gestures uh, and the articulation of my hands, uh, how I work when I'm I'm speaking together with a choir, how I work uh, when I'm on a stage with a symphony orchestra. And how, how uh, what are my gestures, and uh, I, I would say also uh, everyday working process on a stage with a symphony orchestra, and it's a bit, uh, not a bit, a lot different when you uh, when you work in uh, at the opera house, and you are staging ballets or opera productions. Uh, of course, you are in a pit, uh, and and uh, again. Uh, different articulation, different gestures from you as a conductor, uh, different way of, uh, yeah, these uh, rehearsal process, everyday rehearsal process. And these are the things that uh, 
um, inspires and uh, really interests me uh, a lot. That's why I'm also now doing my uh, doctoral thesis uh, about these kind of uh, questions, how to compare the uh, how to compare these uh, um, different styles and different ways of conducting. So. It was a relevant question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you touched the point. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but so um, yeah, in in opera, uh, I suppose also you have to take into account what the choreographer wanted, the, the theatrical parts. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is it somehow more um, direct or straight with with a choir, or because of? The, the diversity of uh, the sounds are are different from from a symphonic orchestra or winds i would not use the word direct because i think the choir uh, often not always uh, but often comes uh, later than the orchestra sound mm -hmm. and uh, afterwards uh, conductor's gesture of course it depends on the on, on a on a choir uh, on a band and and, and so on so on but uh, for, for me, uh, of course, I started with the choir conducting and I'm, I'm in this field for now for some 20 or a bit more years. So I'm, I'm really enjoying and I, I, I can feel really free to, uh, uh, yeah, to mix and to create uh, the sound with my, with my hands. Uh, with the orchestra, uh, of course, the, the whole thing is uh, much bigger. Uh, the colors, the possible colors and the instruments are can be quite uh, quite different and, and quite, quite a lot. So you must be uh, more precise and more strict if we are if we are speaking very uh, in, in a very big lines uh, with, the, with your gestures. Yeah, and, and complex also. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, at the same time, for sure. So your PhD is about different type of conducting. Well, great. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, I'm 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 trying to uh, yeah to focus and and, and to uh, yeah to write about what 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 are the aspects of con a conductor when you are conducting symphonic music mm. and when you are, when you are uh, uh, on a yeah opera house with the ballets and operas. Uh, yeah, in, you, you are on the spotlight when you are in the in the concert hall. Mm -hmm. You are uh, in a dark place uh, somewhere underground when you are in the opera house. But of course, that's not the main thing. Uh, the gestures, the yeah, the the way of conducting uh, in opera house. Of course, uh, I would say you as a conductor, you of course at some spo uh, at some spots you are um, you are driving the car. 
uh, but at many many points you are just the uh, assistant uh, director choreographer stage things uh, soloist uh, ways of filling the phrase you must uh, you must hear you must feel it's it's not always just just your tempo and just your uh, your things mm -hmm. and again quite the same not not the same but uh, but some similar things with, with ballet things. Um, of course, the main is the the tempo. Again, for almost for every soloist, it can be a, a bit different. You must know uh, uh, them quite quite good. Of course, with the modern modern and and, and yeah, ballet it's 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 easier because it's not uh, always on a foot or on a yeah, mm. gesture. Yeah. But uh, mm, but it's another another yeah world of uh, yeah. Con con conducting things and yeah as I said this uh, everyday work and the rehearsal process one is for example if you work with solo for three hours and you have a break I don't know some 10 or 15 minutes in the middle uh, another way is uh, if you work with a professional choir of course the breaks are longer and then so on so on but you can you can uh, work maybe not not three but four hours uh, with all Latvian National Symphony Orchestra again, uh, yeah, you can work hour and then the breaks and so on, but it's always the same. You are as a conductor in the front, orchestra there. In the opera house, well, there are quite a, quite a lot of different uh, type of uh, rehearsals. Just with the solos, just with the choir, uh, these uh, sitting rehearsals when all solos are. Uh, in the front of the stage, but without acting, just the just the musical rehearsals, yeah, just the director rehearsals without. Where okay, they sing they sing their lines, but they are just uh, marking them, mm -hmm. and and so the 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 staging things are the the main ones. Um, I'm I'm also there as a conductor, but I'm not the main one. Director is the the chief there, and so yeah, this this collaboration thing, it's uh, it's a bit different than. How do you um, pick a particular piece of music you want to play and how do you enter a score? Uh, do you, there is indeed uh, the reading uh, by itself, but do you uh, listen to other versions when it's available? Uh, do you um, discuss with a composer when you have the opportunity? How, how, how do you do? Uh, it can be uh, different ways, but uh, mainly I always start with uh, with the score, black and white. Uh, I go through the score with my colored uh, color pencils. I find, uh, yeah, for myself, I, I I have found one way how to, uh, yeah, to get the score. Uh, yeah, colored for me and uh, uh, afterwards when I'm working with the score it, it helps uh, is it it's sorry to interrupt is this is yeah. a form of uh, synesthesia you you have a uh, one color for a, a particular sound or it's it's about something else uh, it's one uh, for for example for orchestral scores it's one color for wind instruments uh, one for brass another one for strings and about okay. percussions and so on so on so on so uh, it's I would say some kind of visual visualizing the the score for for myself as a conductor. If we are speaking about the the choir scores uh, again, uh, one color for soprano, alto, tenor, and mm -hmm. bass, and, and, and so. Uh, I'm also of course making some uh, marks uh, about the, the structure, about the form of the work. And many other may, maybe things, but uh, that's the first thing I do for myself. And then when I have done this, it uh, but it takes a, a lot of time. It, it takes a lot of a uh, lot of lot of hours. Uh, of course, it depends on the length uh, of the length of the of the piece. And uh, then yeah, of course, uh, piano helps a lot. Mm -hmm. But uh, of course, uh, there are scores that's uh, Im almost impossible to play for one person, uh, even choir scores. So uh, yeah, I'm also listening some good uh, recordings, good examples, but not not a lot. I'm I'm trying to focus my uh, yeah <laughs> my inner voice and and my my feeling about the. 
the the, the piece uh, inside of me not 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 taking so much information o- outside so having the music inside your head as uh, when you read something yeah, that you imagine or yeah. in the sound yeah exactly mm. um How do you, um, well, this is a, something that, uh, about a particular example. Uh, for example, there are recordings of um, uh, Zilla Zinia by Peter Vasque that have been recorded by um, the, the radio choir. And Sigvard Sklava is a very good conductor, but the tempo is quite uh, slow uh, in, for my taste. How do you evaluate the, the tempo? Because when I've... S- heard and um, Sola for example playing it I thought it was quite faster and maybe more appropriate to the tension of uh, this particular piece I think tempo is 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 a data that is absolutely relevant if you are speaking about the tempo about Zilazinho or another work of course for me as a conductor is it's not uh, faster or slower uh, I'm I'm always thinking uh, about this at first about this uh, character thing, mm-hmm. and uh, the overall feeling and overall tension, as you said, mm-hmm. and uh, of course it can be faster, it can be slower, but the main thing is the uh, a very clear idea and very clear character of uh, the whole piece or concrete uh, mm-hmm. phrase or uh, the meaning of the words and so on, and and of course for each conductor. The, these uh, inside feelings can be can be different and, and glad I'm glad that they are different yeah. <laughs> otherwise it's yeah always yeah, the same yeah. so yes it's it's it, you the tempo in your conception depend on the piece as a wall but you don't compare this is this is my perception yeah. as, as, a, as a listener and okay but of course uh, the the concrete uh, Yeah, band, choir, orchestra. Uh, it's it also um, creates some kind of attitude about uh, tempos. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, of course it's uh, with amateur uh, amateur singers. M- maybe always these tempos will be a bit more uh, flowing. Yeah, probably mm-hmm. uh, than with the professional uh, professional singers. But again, it mainly uh, depends on the on the on the way of conductors uh, feeling and the, the general idea of the whole uh, whole piece. If we are speaking com- uh, concrete with the zilas uh, zilas in yeah. Mm, yeah, we, uh, to to well, the, the topic about this particular piece is not uh, a very happy one for people who are not Latvian. This is about metaphorically it, it's about uh, deportation to Siberia so yeah I, I heard people uh, of Sola saying oh it's not an easy piece emotionally so uh, on on the moment also there might be uh, uh, some feeling specific that uh, make the, the piece a little different whatever conducting you are you are making I, I guess yeah Uh, yeah, and of course, uh, it always uh, counts your uh, your feelings, your maybe your past, your I don't know uh, mm-hmm. uh, history of your parents, or your grandparents, uh, history of uh, uh, history of Latvia, uh, or we can take uh, nowadays not not a history uh, the things that are happening in ukraine for example and uh, if you if you take uh, yeah these these kind of uh, themes uh, during the rehearsal process yeah of course it it can it can't be uh, divided uh, from from all, all all the things that are happening around us mm-hmm. and and again it's uh, it's uh, yeah It move, it moves, and it's uh, it, the tempo, the the articulation, uh, yeah, also the intonation, and, and and many 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 things, yeah.
to enable uh, people who are not Latvian or maybe from the Baltics understand, I, we can say for sure that uh, choirs have a, a very specific place inside the national culture. And they are not only, in my opinion, um, simply something about singing. It's uh, a way of life. It's um, uh, some sort of micro society and small uh, human group. So uh, <clears throat> I suppose you, knowing you that you do your best to uh, have a, a good overall human dynamic inside a choir uh, for the best. Uh, but I suppose also that there are tough moments or moments where some members are leaving and uh, it's not easy to cope with this kind of events. And so um, how do you deal with this aspect of choir, the human aspect? And how do you recruit people? Uh, I think there is some kind of session every uh, September or something. Uh, I would like to uh, have your insights about uh, this particular topic of people uh, coming and leaving and all this human dynamic because this is not like a professional choir and uh, yeah exactly and it's a <clears throat> it's a yeah big uh, big theme and a big thing for I would say for for all of the conductors of uh, yeah. <laughs> amateur choirs uh, because yeah the, the 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 biggest difference of course uh, if we compare with the professional ones uh, yeah. For them, it's their work. They're coming, uh, I don't know, at nine or ten to work, and they're leaving at two or three. Uh, they have their their ske uh, schedules, their concerts, and so on, so on. With the amateur choirs, also the good ones, uh, uh, of course, it's uh, it's a it's a free thing. Yeah, it's a free mind for uh, for for all of them to, to come to come or not uh, to the at first re rehearsal. Uh, and of course, at first to to choir as it is. Uh, yeah, you are right. In, in solo, we have twice a year on September and January these uh, these times when we introduce uh, and we listen uh, new singers that uh, are willing to come uh, and and as, uh, come yeah, especially and uh, in, in a concrete uh, in in and sang in a in a solo. So. Um, uh, yeah, I would say every September, or yeah, if we uh, com yeah take also generally some maybe some six seven singers every season, uh, they are coming new. Of course, some are uh, s someone goes uh, every season. Hopefully, after the season, not in the middle or <laughs> after two or three mm -hmm. months, mm -hmm. because for for as a for for a conductor, it's it's. Uh, very important to uh, to know uh, the the overall instrument and then uh, what are the the sound and what are the singers we we will work for 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 this project for this program for this season and so on so on and for me it's it's always uh, mm, yeah the thing is the same uh, you can as a conductor and as a choir you can build step by step if you if you if the of course we can't uh, say 100%, but some 80-85% of the singers, they they must be in a choir at least for 5-7 years. If, if less, it's, uh, it's uh, very, very shaky and uh, as a conductor you can't uh, improve uh, step by step the, 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 the overall level of a choir. And if these uh, plus uh, plus minus eighty percent are stable, then you can build up. Uh, you can build uh, build the things uh, smoothly. Uh, uh, yeah, going upward and upward. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 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 of course a uh, big issue uh, for amateur choirs. And there is a transmission, you would say, between the members uh, on helping each other or it does it depend mainly on the conductor for uh, using their, their skills at their best? Well, uh, it can be uh, quite different uh, with every uh, every each of the singers. Some are coming to, uh, to sing in a choir because, I don't know, 
they want to uh, to be a member of a song festival uh, for mm-hmm. example someone wants to uh, to sing uh, in, on a very high level amateur level but very very high they want uh, practice yeah for example twice twice a week and they they need to to be on this uh, yeah to go to uh, maybe some some uh, international competitions to to sing some uh, complex repertoire uh, it's maybe for some some other it's uh, my, my, I know one guy or one lady I, I want to be uh, to spend uh, more, some hours uh, together yeah just a great guy uh, I want to go yeah to meet some I, I don't know some new people and and and, and uh, uh, in this kind of uh, pandemic situation, as we are uh, also now, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not ended yet. Um, I think this this will show uh, what are the 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 true <laughs> the true uh, choir lovers and and choir members and singers and 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 who are not. Uh, and I'm really glad that in my choir in Sola, of course we, yeah. There are some members during these two uh, past seasons that uh, that are lost, let's say, mm-hmm. for, uh, for for Sola, but um, mm, we have uh, yeah we have we have with uh, with with us some again new members. We have uh, met some members that were not in a choir for some five or seven years, and they want to be back, and and they want they 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 are saying that. Yeah, in this, especially in this uh, quiet uh, time when when uh, yeah, many things were, were stopped, uh, they're saying that the choir and then the, the the feeling in the choir in the solo is that they they want to uh, to feel again to be a part of it. Yeah, so yeah. it can yeah. be really really different. Mm-hmm. And um, are there some type of voices more difficult to recruit than than others? Are you in excess of uh, I don't know sopranos and missing uh, baritones? I don't know. I see. I say this randomly, but uh, yeah. Is it, yeah? yeah. Uh, mainly, uh, it's uh, more. Uh, yeah. Mainly the the biggest problem is uh, guys, yeah, the male voices, the basses and 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 antennas, uh, but and and yeah, because with the ladies uh, at least, and and it's not uh, only in a solo. Uh, it, I think it's in in a whole Latvia mm-hmm. and not uh, <laughs> only in in Latvian choirs. Uh, the guys are are uh, mm, biggest problem uh, in. Uh, in the place we are living here in Baltics, I would say that the the high uh, male voice, the tenors, that's uh, that's uh, <clears throat> that's a problem. We have uh, not <clears throat> not uh, not a lot of uh, really high and uh, um, natural uh, tenor voice uh, voices here in Nordic side, uh, as it is, for example, in in Italy or Spain or Portugal. Uh, and yeah, of course, it can it can be uh, a bit uh, changing the whole thing, and and, and it goes. For example, uh, this season that ended uh, some some weeks ago, uh, this was the first season uh, when Solo had so I would say much problems with baritons, especially with baritons, mm-hmm. uh, because yeah last 20 years it was uh, a biggest group and the the strongest group uh, but again it shows that uh, yeah the these all things especially in amateur wise it can it can be quite uh, quite 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 different mm. season by season yeah so we have to remember and to explain to people that covid has done terrible damage in general it yeah, was sure. not, it was not a good time and that you <clears throat> Uh, it's not about um, everybody uh, watching Netflix at home, but really choirs also need their audience and things are meaningful with their, with the audience, I guess. So yeah. Yeah, of course. It it always uh, yeah a two way uh, two way drive. Feedback, yeah. feedback <laughs> and is is uh, absolutely necessary. Yeah. So I understood that you are also in charge in part of a program of the next um, song and dance festival. Yeah. 
Uh, I don't know if you can make some breaking news for my program or if you cannot make absolute spoilers, but um, uh, what can we expect for uh, next year? Well, at first, uh, I hope that we can expect the the festival, <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, because yeah, of, of, yeah, it can be a joke, but it's it's a mm-hmm. uh, it's a big thing, and of course, no one of us know how it will uh, how the next season will go, what will what will happen again with uh, some kind of diseases and and and, and COVID and, and and so on so on. But hopefully, if uh, nothing will stop. If we, uh, if we, uh, if the choirs can work the everyday life, uh, the festival will be there, um, starting from thirtieth of June till till ninth. I would say ninth of uh, July, and uh, for next year, uh, uh, for the choir world in Latvia, it will be a special year and a special festival because we will have uh, two big concerts for choirs. Not only the closing concert, uh, as it has been always as a grand concert, also of course uh, with around uh, fifteen uh, thousand of singers. Mm, but next year uh, it will be one concert just for the choirs uh, in Measure Parks in in an open air uh, stadium, and. Yeah, of course, uh, the second second one will be a closing concert, but it will be together with the dancers, with uh, um, other musicians, and and, and uh, yeah, with a with a with a whole uh, ensemble of of uh, many many uh, amateur uh, singers dancers of of Latvia. But uh, that's true. Uh, I together with my co- uh, with my father Ari Shepes, we are. Uh, we are working uh, especially with this uh, choir concert. Also, that that uh, that concert will be in Measure Parks, and yeah, again, we I, I can say that this uh, COVID situation and these two and a half years, almost three seasons, mm-hmm. that are may, uh, mainly or then stopped, then paused, then again you can work. Then you can work just with four members as a quartet. Then you can. Uh, work, I don't know, with uh, as it was uh, previous year, uh, just with 12 singers. Then again, for some two, three months, again, stop. Uh, of course, it, it will uh, uh, it will interrupt uh, and it will, yeah, make some, some damage to the, the, to the whole process. And uh, hope uh, that's that's good that uh, last month we had uh, two. Concerts, one in Talsi, one in Cesis, uh, where all mixed choirs of Latvia, all Latvian mixed choirs came together and we sang not all the repertoire but at least uh, at least part of it, and that was the the first time we we met each other and we after the COVID times and, and the COVID years we uh, yeah we heard how we are. How how we are singing now <laughs> after this uh, after these years, and of course uh, when we speak about traditional things and traditional repertoire, I think it will it will be uh, powerful uh, in a good level, uh, maybe in character even more stronger uh, now after the COVID and uh, hopefully next year we can say after the. The war in Ukraine, uh, than it was before. But if we are speaking about the let's say new pieces, uh, because we also will have some some premieres, some two or three premieres in the choir concert. Oh, of course, this this whole situation is uh, is not the best because uh, the singers can't uh, really uh, practice uh, in in the rehearsals the the, the music, and of course it's. Uh, after afterwards, you can hear it in, in a concert. And just yesterday, uh, gen, uh, just yesterday, I met with uh, uh, one of the composers of the new piece uh, with Janis Lusans, and uh, we made some uh, yeah minor Adjustment. uh, adjustments. Yeah, exactly. And 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 uh, yeah, we 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 sat for so, for some hours and 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 speak and and thought about what what, what can we help uh, for the singers and for for the whole piece. Because yeah, 
a year can it, it in these COVID times I, I would say a year till the next song festival it's a lot it's a lot of time but it's a lot uh, only 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 in, in, in a way that we, we can we can uh, sing and we can rehearse if we will have some again this empty months uh, in the middle it's it will be yeah uh, it, it will affect well one cannot defeat uh, 100 years of tradition and uh, no no that's uh, for sure yeah but still it's uh, it's it's a big inconvenience so now there is a um, um, an acoustical improvement in measure parks the, can you uh, tell us about uh, what what it brings <clears throat> it is and this new uh, mm, new acoustics and uh, the new hall it uh, produces uh, much uh, clearer uh, and louder sound from the choir uh, of course for now we can't say <coughs> very precise how how the sound will be next year uh, but uh, just a week ago uh, we were in measure parks a bit more than thousand singers uh, and we sang some uh, also some some pieces and, and, and uh, minor part but still from from uh, song festival repertoire and uh, especially a cappella pieces I hope that that we 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 for the first time, we we will try to to uh, to not use the mic mics, to not use the microphones, and to get the a cappella sound uh, really uh, pure, uh, without uh, any kind of uh, yeah technical help. <laughs> Some choirs have a very distinct position depending on the, the type of voices uh, of the members. But uh, what I found striking, for example, in Sola is you try to distribute a little uh, differently, uh, or am I mistaken? You seem to have a very specific attention to sound uh, about this. Yeah, um, that's the thing I, I have found and have I've tried in rehearsal process. Uh, yeah, last seasons for I, I would say for some four or five years. Yeah. Uh, I found it useful, of course not all repertoire maybe uh, and all uh, way of uh, composing techniques it's suitable for this mixed uh, mixed voices uh, standing or sitting at rehearsals but uh, it helps uh, and it produces uh, much more intention and focus uh, from every singer and that's uh, the best thing and of course the um, changes also the the audio sound because of course uh, for example if I'm as a as a bass I'm in a bass uh, uh, surroundings uh, and in the front and in, mm -hmm. on the left and on the right of course I can I can uh, feel quite quite free but uh, and it's of course, then it's uh, easier to combine and to work with the ensemble of of a bass group of one group of a, of a choir. But if we are uh, sitting mixed, uh, I must hear and I must um, blend with uh, with other voices, and I must at the same time I must of course blend with my uh, with my mates with with the basses. But I must hear them, uh, yeah, not 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 next to me. Yeah, if you are, um, let's say, an alto, and uh, you hear an alto next to you, uh, maybe it will uh, or she will cover mm -hmm. your own your own voice. If you m manage to hear yourself in a better way because you don't have the same type of voice next to you, it makes the uh, the, the self monitoring let's say uh, easier that's uh, that's the spirit of the uh, yeah, yeah also true also true and uh of it, it it makes a difference of, of course how i as a conductor how i'm yeah mixing and and where can i put uh, every each of a of a singer and a particular voice and uh, yeah it's yeah not not a secret not all of us uh, has uh, maybe strong voices or, or mm -hmm. and so on so on so 
and also the heights uh, and uh, it's also uh, um, a, a big issue of course uh, if you are two meters and uh, maybe some centimeters more you really can't uh, yeah stand or sit in the first row <laughs> uh, maybe the second or especially the third third row will be uh, best uh, uh, spot for you but again uh, I'm trying to uh, mixed and to uh, place the singers of course if we have some not so uh, experienced singer and not so strong singer I'm trying to put uh, him or her in the front and in both ears uh, backwards try to to put some some uh, yeah goods or 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 uh, yeah uh, uh, stable singers so they can produce the sound and uh, then the me as an unexperienced one I'm also also giving the best possible in information out of me mm. some members will help the others also to focus it's it's a balance to be found between all these aspects yeah and of course there are I would say there is no one way how to do it the, the, the ways are so 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 many and uh, that's why I'm uh, quite uh, quite often mixing and uh, trying new versions mm -hmm. and and uh, new positions for for some singers and trying to find the the, the best balance uh, of the overall choir sound and the best balance for uh, every each group of, of a choir. So about sound, uh, it's going to be my uh, my last question. I'm um, that that is the same for uh, every guest. Uh, as far as you can remember in your childhood, what is your first memory connected to sound or music? The first memory for me as a sound is my mother's voice. I would say, yeah. And uh, I think I'm now remembering these things when, uh, when mother and my wife uh, sing some lullabies to my uh, child, to, uh, to Harald's, my little boy. And uh, these are the times that I remember uh, inside of me uh, some kind of these uh, feelings and, and, and times when my mother uh, sang to me. Uh, they have different type uh, of voices and, 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 and so on and so on. But uh, some things are similar, I don't know, yeah, of course, the attitude, the yeah, the softness, or and yeah, the love that's in 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 mother's voice. I would say that's that's the first thing I remember. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you very much for being with us today. And uh, if you enjoy watching this program, drop a like, subscribe, share on social networks. It's the best way to help the growth of this channel. And we hope to see you here very soon. See you.